And this is the super moon, as they call it. Well, the second night of it, anyways. You know why is it every time they keep talking about the super moon? It's never really that super. I mean, it's nice. It's bright and round. It's nice, but it's never quite what you expect it to be. Every time, every every time we have a super moon, it always, you know, looks like this. Even when I was in Indiana, well, I first heard it, I was like, oh, it's going to look cool from out here. And, no, nah, not much different than this. Just once I like to be somewhere where it's, like, gigantic, like it was in some photos. That would be awesome. Cool nonetheless, though. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> I know. It's been a bit since I did a video. A couple weeks, at least, or so. A lot's been going on, so... Honestly, I haven't been feeling exceptionally inspired, really. I mean, I posted up some videos, obviously, but no walking around ones as of late. So, here we are right now. I mean, I have some videos recorded already that I made that I was going to, but then I never got to them. Quite frankly, they're kind of meh. So, I probably might not use them or. I'll go through them. I may include them with this video. You'll see, depending. If not, it'll just be this. But yeah, been busy. Wife's been back for the past couple weeks or so. Back from Indiana. A lot of stuff going on with that. But yeah. And busy still trying to find a job. Is that moon again? Still trying to find another job. Been on like two interviews this past week. Yeah. Hopefully it pan out. It's stuff that's local, like right down the street, so it'd be awesome to get one of those because commute to work would be awesome. That would give me like a little bit more time in my life, you know, like less less time I have to spend on commuting on public transportation, the more time I have for other stuff, like sleep and my wife or some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on. So yeah. Actually, the moon is a little bit more, you can see a little bit more detail on the moon from down here. I wish I had a better camera with like a telescopic lens. I could actually get like full detail of it. It looked really cool then. So, yeah. I think tonight, I will give you a brief discussion on subcultures and why on one hand they're great on the other hand they piss me off um subcultures are like basically like just different you know, cultures sort of like less different communities like the goth and death rock community Punk rock community, metalheads, um, okay, lesbian community, the plus size community, etc., so on, that sort of thing. And these cultures are great, and we need these because not everybody is just a simple, you know, one solid nick thing, you know. Now, all of us want to be, you know, normal, regular, 9 to 5, normal dressed person, living a normal life, doing normal things. You know, that look, have a certain look that matches what other people are expected to look like and act like and speak like and etc. on and on. 
and we need that because I mean for instance I fall under about four or five different subcultures really <coughs> no more actually you know on one hand you could look at it as like oh but that's labels though on the other hand you can look at it as the places where you fit in so to speak and subcultures are great for that subcultures are sometimes where you find yourself you know you know they're basically you know not the norm the regular straight white heterosexual normal thing <coughs> unfortunately with that said one thing I noticed that's in most subcultures it's like the clickish attitude and for some of them I mean I'm not saying everyone in subcultures are like this because obviously they're not henceforth me making this video you know <clears throat> but you still can't escape, you know, elitism and even racism of all places and subcultures, even like like the geek subculture, you know, racism and sexism is prevalent as fuck. You know, and it's bad enough you find stuff I mean you kinda expect to find that in like and metal that I've seen it, but you, sometimes in punk too. But if you run into stuff like that in like the goth death rock community, the goth community was is basically started becoming what it was for people that were different that wanted to band together. They were different. They were really out of the norm. They were into the darker side of things. So, they just kind of flocked together and there you go. However, when racism and sexism, you know, kind of digs into that, or like with the geek culture, you know, where people are giving shit just because they like science fiction and comic books and a love for basically stories and literature and stuff and dressing up and everything. But, you know, another genre that's getting so much shit there's racism and sexism in that too and it's like those two piss me off the most <clears throat> depending on the area you go I'm finding the whole racism thing a lot less in the whole metal and punk communities as it used to be actually more so metal I mean well yeah okay metal but you have to, have to kind of include the two you're finding a little less depending on the area, but notice in Gotham Death Rock and the geek culture, you're finding a little bit more. Weird thing is also you kind of find that in the gay and lesbian area. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Seriously, I don't get this fucking shit, you know. And stuff like the Gotham Death Rock community and the geek community. Stuff like that. I don't get the whole thing of... Oh, you're too fat to be part of this. Or you're too brown to be part of this. Etc, etc. It's like, really? It's like, it was interesting. There's like, um, a Facebook group I'm in. Or Facebook page, actually. It's not a group. But, um, they post a picture of a black out of Joy Division shirt. 
Okay. It's like, you know, I'll post up pictures normally people in goth, death rock, post-punk garb, whatever. Alright, so, no big deal, right? Amazingly enough, all the fucking comments, <clears throat> a good 50, 50 to 65, 70% of them, were like, oh, I bet he doesn't even know who Joy Division is. Why the fuck is he wearing that? Oh, my favorite song, really dark wave. <sighs> yeah. As if somebody of my skin tone can't appreciate certain music. Really? You have to be white to appreciate a certain type of music? Really? I know I personally hate that shit of, like, you know, I've been in this shit for a long time, you know. Every time I wear what I want to wear, or whatever, or I'm dressed ready to go play a show or something, people look at me like, like I'm those pictures of Lil Wayne wearing leather jacket with like punk and metal bands all over it you know look at me like I am a fucking was like really are you fucking serious <clears throat> remember we played a show uh, it was a few months back now I think it was back in March possibly we went and playing a show, and there was a metal band. One, well, there was a couple metal bands playing with us, and some of the people from that band and some of the crowd and everything. They saw me standing outside with a couple friends, and they were looking at me like, "Well, what the fuck are you doing here?" <coughs> you know, they couldn't. You know, it was like. It was so surprised to see a brown guy in a leather jacket with a Misfits logo on the back. Apparently, maybe I was just somebody just hanging out there or something. I didn't belong or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, but then, you know, later on when they saw us setting up and saw me, and I was like, oh, what the fuck is he gonna do? You know? It's maybe they're expecting me to rap or some bullshit. I don't know what what they were thinking. And of course we play. And once we're playing, Jaws kind of drop and they're like, Oh, this guy's for real. You know, it was like faces. And of course, after walking stage, the same people that gave me weird, dirty looks before they even knew what was getting on a stage. Now they're praising me, and they're like, "Oh, this is fucking awesome! You guys are great! Yeah, that's great!" You know, <clears throat> I've been doing this shit for years, and fighting to get respect. I'm still fighting to get respect, really. I'm winning here and there a little bit, but it's still a fight just to be to be respected and be taken seriously. I understand it to a certain point, but it shouldn't be this goddamn hard. Just like, oh my god, women women in the geek culture. It's like, guys complain about how, maybe these guys complain about how all these women just don't understand like their love fascination for comics and anime and stuff. And, oh, well, you know, maybe they need to get more stuff like that in video games, blah, blah. It's been happening. Now it's just a little, little bit more out in the mainstream now. And now that it's actually it's like, okay, well, here you go. People are losing their fucking shit. You know? So what, a girl can't? Like, uh, playing video games or, oh, the whole cosplay thing. It's just... Here's what gets me about that. You're gonna... Okay, some, especially when some comic book artists talk shit. 
Like, okay, you motherfuckers are going to, like, design a female character, right? In a skimpy costume. You know, not very effective if they were actually in battle, but... Either way, there's a skimpy costume and everything. I'll design it like that. And then you have girls who actually make and wear an exact replica of such thing you designed. You think people are like, oh, that's fucking awesome. You actually brought to life what I created. That's amazing. They think they do that. No. It's the total opposite. And it's like, they're pretty much, you know, getting called a poser and everything. They're getting, well, basically the same shit somebody like me would get. You know, except worse. Now, also, you know, same, like, even further, further fucked up part of the whole sexism and geek culture thing is like, you know, these girls get, you know, felt up and shit. And it's like, what the fuck is this? You know, the whole point of these countercultures and everything is to get away from these jock, dude, bro, asshole mentalities, bully assholes that we have to deal with all our life. Why? In order now to incorporate that same attitude in our countercultures? So basically the one thing we got involved with to get away from that is becoming that. I think there's something wrong with this picture.